Welcome to part five of this beginner's guide series on photography. Today we're going to be talking about exposure. Okay, so what exactly is exposure? Exposure is simply just getting the brightness of our images correct, so uh, not too bright, not too dark. And there are three settings on the camera that control the brightness of our images. Uh, we've got the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO setting, as illustrated by this first chart here. Now, we don't initially need to understand what they are, but you can see from this diagram that to get a brighter image by controlling the aperture, we just need to reduce the f number so we can see from this chart that an f1.4 setting if our lens will allow us to go to f1.4 that's going to give us a brighter image than an f11 setting so as far as aperture goes the lower we make the f number the brighter our image gets with shutter speed the faster the shutter goes the darker the image gets so if you look at that central column there, hopefully most of you will be aware that let's say a half a second is a bigger number than a quarter of a second. And so as we talked about in parts 3a and 3b, as we speed up our shutter, so we make the fraction of a second smaller and therefore we make the camera take the photo more quickly, that darkens down the image and as we slow the shutter speed as we move more towards one second we brighten our image and the final setting is the ISO which is really the sort of balancing number and as you'll see later on in this video I tend to let the camera control the ISO and the lower the ISO number gets the, the darker our image is going to be and the higher the ISO, the brighter our image is going to be. And so getting the exposure right is really just a question of balancing these three settings to give us the correct brightness to our image. So if you start off with a photo like this one, I'll be illustrating these points with a handful of photos from a particular wedding shoot. With this first photo, we are taking a photo of a bride who's getting ready for a wedding. Um, because the main focus of the photo is the bride herself and not the background, which could be quite a messy background, we're going to want to draw the attention of the person looking at the photo to the bride rather than the background and so it's actually desirable for us to have the bride in focus but for the background to be out of focus as it is in this example. Now if I just were to put the camera into a fully automatic mode the camera's only going to be thinking about getting the brightness of the image correct. It's not going to be looking at the scene and saying okay this is picture of a bride. It's only the bride that we want in focus so the camera is not necessarily going to know that we're happy to have in this case a blurry background and if we set the camera to fully automatic mode in this relatively low light indoor situation it may well give us a set of figures like these in figure one. All three columns are in green to indicate that the camera is controlling all of the settings automatically. And what this figure is illustrating is that the camera has chosen an aperture of f5.6, a shutter speed of an eighth of a second, and an ISO of 1600. Now don't worry that at this stage in the video you don't fully understand what that means because I'll be taking you through each of these three settings one by one to explain uh, 
not only how they impact on the brightness of the image, but what the side effects are. So just looking at that aperture column first, the camera has chosen an aperture of f5.6. Now, if I was to take that photo of the bride with an aperture of f5.6, not only will she be in focus, but probably the background will be pretty much in focus as well. And that's not the look that we're going for. The second problem is that in the next column, the shutter speed of an eighth of a second is going to be way too slow. And if I'd used an eighth of a second for that shot, there's a very good chance that even though the bride isn't moving a great deal, if she had moved her head even slightly while I was taking the photo, then she would have looked quite blurry. And the final problem is that an ISO of 1600 is not ideal, although with most modern cameras we're going to get away with ISO 1600. I'll talk about the side effects of the ISO in a minute. Now I just want to explain this table and the way I've sort of laid it out. There are a total of 24 boxes on this table. 12 of them are black and 12 of them are white. Now bear with me but in this particular scenario we're saying that if 12 boxes are black, 12 are white, then we have the correct brightness to our image. Hopefully all will become clear as we move on. So for this shot of the bride getting ready, fully automatic mode hasn't given me the sort of settings that I need to achieve the sort of look that I want. So the first thing that I would do in that scenario is I would switch my camera to the aperture priority mode, which is usually signified by an AV or an A on your camera mode dial. And as I explained in part two, that then puts me in control of the aperture setting on the camera. And I know that to achieve that blurred background look that I'm going for, I need to dial down that aperture number from f5.6 and in this illustration I can go down as low as f2 because in this hypothetical example I'm using an f2 lens so that's the lowest that I'll be able to get the f number down to and so if we add in figure 2 alongside figure 1. Figure 2 is representing aperture priority mode so the aperture column has now become red because I'm controlling that setting manually whereas the shutter speed and the ISO are still being controlled by the camera so they are in green. So I've moved to aperture priority mode and I've dialed my f number down from f5.6 to f2. Now what that's done is it's turned three of those boxes white. So it's increased the brightness of our image. Now those three boxes represent three increments on the aperture scale. Also known as three stops. That's just the terminology that we use for one increment of aperture or one increment of shutter speed or one increment of ISO. So the camera says, oh, Steve's increased the aperture by three stops. So I need to compensate for that by turning three of the boxes black in the shutter speed and the ISO column. So the camera will automatically compensate for this extra light that we're letting in by both increasing the shutter speed from an eighth of a second to a fifteenth of a second and by bringing the ISO number down from 1600 to 400. So across the shutter and the ISO column we've turned three of those boxes black and you can see that we still have 12 
black boxes and 12 white boxes. So our exposure is actually unchanged. So what's the impact on our image in going from figure one to figure two? Well, the brightness of our image will be unchanged, but by dialing down the aperture, we are blurring the background more, which gives us a more appealing look to our portrait shot. Uh, shutter speed has increased from an eighth of a second to a fifteenth of a second, so it's roughly twice as fast, which reduces the chances of our image being blurred. And our ISO number has come down from 1600 to 400. Now what does that mean? Well, the lower that we can get that ISO number down to, the cleaner our image is going to look. The less noise it's going to have, the sharper it's going to look, the less of a mottledy, mushy look it's going to have. So by letting more light in via the aperture route, we're able to clean our image up via the ISO setting and we're also able to achieve a faster shutter speed which means that if there's movement in the shot it's less likely to cause blurring. However, I know that a fifteenth of a second is still not fast enough on the shutter and if we go back to that photo of the bride having her makeup done, it's actually, it probably looks sharp on this video and the thing that we want to be most in focus is her left eye which is the closest one to the camera but I know from closely examining this photo that her eye is not completely sharp and if you actually look at the makeup brush which is moving you can see that the makeup brush is actually blurred and this is all as a consequence of having a shutter speed that the camera has selected but it's not a fast enough shutter speed for this particular shot. So in a challenging lighting situation like this, just controlling the aperture myself, I know is not giving me sufficient control over the camera settings. And in situations like this, I will tend to move the camera into the very scary manual mode but we can make manual mode less scary by dialing the ISO value of the camera to the automatic setting. So if we turn to figure three now, because we're in manual mode, the aperture and shutter columns are both red now because we're taking control of those two settings, but because I've told the camera to automatically choose the ISO number, the ISO column remains green. So in manual mode, I've looked at the scene, I've decided that I want a blurry background, so I'm quite happy to let as much light as possible in via the aperture route. So I've dialed my aperture down to the f2 that I'm able to get to with the lens that I've got. I've decided that I need a shutter speed of at least a 60th of a second. So I've dialed in to my camera a shutter speed of a 60th of a second. And looking at the shutter columns in figures 2 and figure 3, we can see that two of our boxes have turned black in the shutter column and so in order to keep 12 boxes white we've had to turn two of the boxes in the ISO column white so we've had to crank up our ISO from 400 to 1600. So we are back to the less desirable ISO figure of 1600 that we had in figure one but what we've done is we've let more light in via the aperture route which has blurred our background more which is absolutely fine and we've allowed less light in by speeding up our shutter 
from the eighth of a second that it was in figure one to a sixtieth of a second as it is in figure three, which is I know going to be sufficiently fast for this sort of scenario where there isn't a huge amount of movement in my shot, but because it's a candid shot of a bride, she's not sitting still posing for the shot, she's going about her business of having her makeup done. In that scenario, I can usually get away with a 60th of a second. And with the settings as they are in figure three, I can get a shot like this one, which again, probably on this video, it won't be apparent, but this is a sharper image and the bride's left eye is actually what we call tack sharp. It is properly sharp, whereas in this photo, it's slightly out of focus due to movement and a slow shutter speed. Now, shooting outdoors in good light is um, much less challenging um, when we have a lot of light to work with, the camera will tend to automatically give us a nice fast shutter speed and a nice low ISO number. So for me, when I'm shooting a wedding, I very rarely need to go to a manual mode in an outdoor lighting situation. And I'll illustrate that with a couple of photos for you. So let's say we're going for a photo like this. Um, it's the same couple, but it's an engagement shot. Again, because it's a, a portrait shot, um, it's actually quite nice to have the blurry background that we get with a low aperture F number. But the camera doesn't know that that's the look that we're going for. So if we were to put the camera into the fully automatic mode and frame this shot up, we may well get settings that look something like this. Now let's just assume that the camera has given us an F number of 5.6 again, which as we know isn't going to give us as much background blur as we would like. But because we've got more light to play with outside, Rather than giving us an eighth of a second shutter speed, we've got a nice, reasonably fast one two hundred fiftieth of a second. And again, because we've got more light to work with, the camera might give us an ISO of something like 200, which is a low enough ISO number that we're not going to get a lot of grain and mushiness in our image. We're going to get a nice, sharp, clean shot at that sort of ISO. So what I'm saying is in, in good light, our shutter speed and ISO numbers tend not to be much of a worry. And as I will illustrate, I tend to just let the camera select those two settings automatically so that I can focus on my aperture number. So in order to get a shot like this, I'm going to be dialing my aperture F number down as low as I can get it. Um, I know that the couple that I'm shooting here are about the same distance from the camera, so I can get away with a nice blurry background and a nice shallow depth of field, as I covered in part two. So the fact that only a, a small slice of my image is in focus shouldn't give me a problem in this situation it's unlikely that, let's say, the groom-to-be on the right is going to be in focus, whereas the bride on the left is going to be out of focus because they are on the same, what we call focal plane, they're the same distance from the camera. So I can afford to really blur the background and the foreground and know that the two of them are still within that shallow slice of the image that is going to be in focus. So I'm happy to dial my F number down to F2 as illustrated in figure five using aperture priority mode. And because in going from the aperture column in figure four to the aperture column in figure five, I've turned three of those boxes white 
the camera will automatically turn three of the boxes in the other two columns black in order to compensate and to keep the photo correctly exposed. And in this hypothetical example, the camera has turned two of the boxes in the shutter column black by increasing the shutter speed from a 250th of a second to a thousandth of a second and it's brought the ISO number in the ISO column down one stop from 200 to 100 which is as low as the camera is able to make the ISO and hence is as clean and sharp as the image is going to get and between those two adjustments, shutter speed and ISO, the camera has compensated for the extra light that I've allowed in by dialing my F number down and blurring my background. Now the key point here is that the shutter speed and ISO in figure 4 of a 250th of a second and an ISO of 200, those settings are perfectly fine and the shutter speed and ISO in figure 5 being a thousandth of a second and a 100 ISO are also perfectly fine. In fact they're even more desirable than the shutter and ISO settings in figure 4 but either would give me a perfectly good result in this outdoor good lighting scenario. However at the other end of the scale, what if I want the whole of my image to be in focus right from the foreground all the way to the background? And probably an extreme example of this from a wedding shoot would be the shot where we try to get all of the wedding guests into the photo. And we want both the guests in the very front row to be in focus and also the guests right at the back to be in focus as well. Now for a photo like this we're going to have to adjust our aperture such that we get a much deeper depth of field so that we increase the slice of our image that's in focus to be pretty much the whole of the image. And to achieve that we need to, in aperture priority mode, let's say, increase that F number up to something around F8, F11, maybe even F16. But that's going to have the impact of darkening down our image. So we're going to need to compensate using shutter speed and ISO. So figure six here illustrates the sort of settings that we would get if we had the exact same amount of light that we had when we were shooting the portrait shot of the of the couple as represented by figure 5 as we move to figure 6 we have dialed our aperture to f11 and so in going from figure 5 to figure 6 we have turned five squares from white to black and so being in aperture priority mode the camera is controlling the shutter and the ISO settings and the camera needs to automatically turn five of the boxes in the shutter and ISO column from black to white to give us the same overall exposure to our shot, the same brightness. And so in this hypothetical example in figure six the camera has had to slow the shutter from a thousandth of a second down to one twenty-fifth of a second and it's had to increase the ISO from 100 to 400. Now for this sort of shot a one twenty-fifth of a second shutter speed is going to be fine and an ISO of 400 whilst not absolutely ideal is going to give us a pretty clean shot so those settings in figure six would be perfectly fine. 
Now the point that I'm trying to make with figures four, five and six is that if you're outdoors in good light, you're almost always going to get shutter speeds and ISO values that are going to be acceptable even if you let the camera choose those settings automatically. And what that means is that aperture priority mode is probably going to be absolutely fine for outdoor shots, particularly at something like a wedding. There will be limited situations where these sorts of settings are not going to be appropriate, like fast moving sports shots or shots of let's say a waterfall when we want to force the camera to give us a slow shutter speed because we've got the camera on a tripod and we want to make the water look all silky and smooth but I'm not talking about those sorts of scenarios I'm talking about day-to-day -day shooting or the vast majority of us including wedding photography and the way that I tend to end up shooting is in low light if I'm not using a flash then I will tend to be setting my camera as in figure three so I'll be in manual mode but with the ISO set to automatic and if I'm outdoors in good light I tend to find that aperture priority does everything that I need and I can focus on setting my aperture number anywhere from let's say the f2 that we see in figure 5 through to the f11 that we see in figure 6 or somewhere in between if we're shooting perhaps a small group of people who are only slightly different distances from the camera in which case I might be at an f number of f4 or f 5.6 let's say. So just to summarize we can find ourselves in all sorts of different situations um, and the brightness in those scenarios can vary massively from let's say indoors after dark through to outdoors on a very bright sunny day and we have to adjust the camera settings so that the camera can compensate for those changes in brightness and still give us an appropriately exposed shot that's not too bright, not too dark. And this is achieved through three different settings, aperture, shutter and ISO. We can adjust any combination of those settings. We can adjust all three or just two of them or just one of them. But between the three, we need to get the correct balance to give us a shot that's neither too bright nor too dark. As we adjust each of those three settings, we have to bear in mind that there is a side effect to making those adjustments. With aperture, as discussed at length in part two of this series, as we brighten the image through the aperture setting, as we bring down the F number, we do have a shallower depth of field, so less of our image is in focus. This can be desirable for portrait shots, but undesirable if we're trying to shoot the entire wedding party, because most of the guests will be out of focus if we bring our F number down too low. Shutter speed, in very general terms, I would say a faster shutter speed is more desirable because it gives us less chance of a blurry image but in low light situations a fast shutter speed does darken our image down and that might mean that we need to bring up the ISO number in order to compensate but with ISO a higher ISO number brightens our image but in virtually every scenario I can think of we want to get an ISO setting that is as low as we can possibly get because lower ISO numbers mean higher quality images. Anyway, I hope my 
slightly unorthodox method of explaining this has been of some use to you. If it has, I'd be very grateful if you'll just give this a very quick thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.